Hello and welcome. My name is Wilson Harwood. I am a studio designer and acoustician based out of Nashville, Tennessee. And today I'm gonna to take you behind the scenes into one of my client's projects who built a studio in a garage. So if you're on that journey of trying to design and eventually build your own home recording studio, this video is not to be missed, especially if you plan to do it in a garage. Before we jump in, I have two options for you. You can either sign up for my free soundproofing workshop at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's 45 minutes of in-depth teaching, giving you a lot of the stuff I know about soundproofing a home recording studio. To do that, just sign up right away at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. The other option is if you do not want to do this all on your own, you can reach out to, with me directly at a soundproof clarity call on my website. Just go to soundproofyourstudio.com, click on the soundproof clarity call link and sign up for the call there. And I'd be happy to talk more about your project with you. All right, enough of me jibber jabbering. Let's jump in to this lesson on going behind the scenes with my client's soundproof studio in his garage. All right, welcome. So today is gonna to be fun. I'm gonna be showing you guys behind the scenes on the 3D model for one of my client's projects. As you can see, this is in a garage and it was a really fun project and a really challenging one, as I mentioned in the intro. The main reason being that we had very little space to build a really complex and intricate studio design. There's a window, as you can see we put in there. We're blocking off half of the driveway with a new cinder block wall filled with sand. And the car had to fit in the garage perfectly, leaving just enough room. But we also wanted to have a bump out so that there was even more space in the garage. This was also connected to a basement here, which you can kind of see in this room where there's a furnace and that involves the ventilation room, which is why I have that here. So to start with, I'm going to take you through the fun part first and then we'll break things down. All right. So to start with, let's break down the idea behind this design and we'll look at all the different aspects of it first. So I'm going to show you kind of the fun stuff looking in here first. So we'll take off the ceiling and you can kind of see in here we've got some acoustic treatment. These purple lines here that you're seeing are actually my Enscape lights. So I will turn those off as well. We've got our Enscape lighting. So I'm just going to take that off. And uh, what that represents is just some strip lighting that's on the back of these to give the backlighting for our panels. And I'm going to take off the acoustic cloud here as well. So we're going to take out these clouds. We can see a little bit better. So this is the space that we're dealing with in this garage and many of you who are building garage studios might be in a similar situation. One of the hardest aspects of this design was this post that's existing here, a support beam post, and then the existing, as you can kind of see here, the black, these are existing ducts that we couldn't really move. So I had to design walls and ceilings around these ducts with a very low ceiling height to begin with. And my client rightfully so didn't want to lose a lot of ceiling height in the room. So let's take a look at the back wall. We're gonna have a sort of faux brick wall here, which is gonna look great. And then you can see down coming like that. He loves palm trees, by the way. So there's gonna be like a, a fake palm tree. He's a drummer. Um, so the drum kit's back there. Uh, metal metal uh, producer as well. So we're a lot of guitar heads. There's even an ISO box in this design in the separate room over there. So pretty cool design and then very adamant about having light, which I don't blame uh, him for that. It's going to be awesome. So we have a custom soundproof window from the outside in and I can show more about that design later. The ventilation system and HVAC system comprises two parts and I'm actually leaning towards this more and more. I've gone back and forth but man, mini splits are easy. When you're designing these studios, they're easy, cost effective. So we put one on the back wall here. It's probably a little bit oversized for the space, but it's gonna heat and cool it. Honestly, these newer models, especially like the higher end Mitsubishis and Daikins and stuff like that, they can do smaller rooms and regulate themselves better so that you don't get a bunch of problems there. But he's also going to be getting fresh air from a separate room in his basement over here. And that's gonna come through this baffle box here and then it's gonna come down with a Nailer Industries diffuser because I was really worried about the high velocity in such a small baffle box, which we can talk about later as well. So I built, had designed in a specialty diffuser that will get us an NC rating, which is a noise criterion curve rating that meets the standards of a studio, which is really important. So a little bit of extra money there, but well worth it. 
Same thing on the return grill, it's gonna be ginormous. The reason for that is that return grills, you can't get quite the same NC curve with a smaller grill. So we're gonna let that air come through slowly and it's gonna have a nice Nailer Industries return register or grill, sorry, as well here. That's going to make sure that you don't hear the noise of the air flowing into the through the grill itself and into the baffle box. So really cool stuff here. I'm excited for him. And then he's got his desk, his speakers on stands, some very thin acoustic treatment in this design because we prioritize space over the quality of the acoustics, which is something in these small studios. This is some serious wisdom for you guys out there. You cannot have your cake and eat it too. There is no way to have a very small studio and get amazing acoustics and still have a ton of space in the room. It's just physically impossible. So you have to make some sort of sacrifices along the way. And maybe sacrifice is too strong a word. You have to make decisions, which essentially means to cut, um, along the way because there's no way to do it. So people hire me because I can help them make decisions that will lead to the best outcome for their goals. So it's not so cut and dry of like, we want perfect acoustics. We want perfect isolation. There is such a gray area in there, and I wish I could get more of my clients to recognize that or more of you on the community here as you're building your own studios. Remember, it's not going to be perfect. It's all about making the right decisions for what you need. So now that I've done that spiel, let's take a look at the soundproofing first um, and some of the decisions I made on the soundproofing so you can understand what I did here. So the exterior, the studio is comprised on the wall section with two different wall designs. We have our double wall system on the front, the side, and the back here. And you can see one of the things that's really helpful is you can see this fire stop, which a lot of people don't realize is going to be some rock wool or thermofiber and half inch drywall that comes up against the side of the wall to stop fire from spreading up into the ceiling, which is important. Uh, it's still soundproof and isolated, so that's really helpful. Uh, and then our wall system is just two layers of drywall and then this brick wall here and then we have an airspace and insulation inside of that wall. I believe a 24 inch on center stud wall and then I'm using the Mason Industries sway bracing clips to help with supporting that wall so that's really helpful there. Some weird details here as you can see around the beam I have to design those out carefully. This is the type of stuff where if you're doing this yourself and you don't think through this ahead of time um, this could be a section where you really mess up and get get into some trouble. So this is why having plans and thinking through stuff carefully even if you hand draw a section of this beam it really help you think through some really technical stuff before you get in there. This wall is the real crazy one. You can look at it, you're like, why did he build a castle in here? So <laughs> there's a lot that goes into this. So this guy right here, um, essentially what we're doing, so we'll take that out. So we had three posts, two king posts and a jack post right here in the middle that are used to support his house. So we can't take those out. Another soundproofing nightmare for those of you who are not familiar with how to do this. And I'll talk about that later in the video. But this wall is a big wall here because we don't have that the benefit of the concrete wall over here. So I still wanted to make this really strong. So I did two, a layer of 5 8 inch drywall, two layers of mass loaded vinyl, and another layer of drywall on the outside. Remember, he's playing drums and he's ripping these drums and we do not want to hear him going out into the garage and out throughout the rest of the world. Same thing on the inside wall, but this wall needed to be short and then taller and it's just so crazy. I can't even begin to tell you how crazy it is. They call this the hush frame wall. I'm gonna take off the drywall here so you can see that and we're gonna take off the MLV and then you can start to see how I diagram these walls back here. So you can see the hush frame rafts and the one by three furring channel, super nice. Um, this is going to decouple this wall. So it's, a, it's not a double wall because we didn't have the space for a double wall. So we're doing mass on one side air spring with the air gap and the insulation in the middle and decoupling using the hush frame rafts on the inside. So that's how that wall works. And then we have this really crazy complicated thing where it comes over here and then we snuck in a fully customized door in the corner. It's a weird door height. You can't buy this thing off the shelf. Nothing about this door is easy or <laughs> straightforward. So it's fully custom. What I did here without going too in depth with this is I just did two layers of three quarter inch MDF with two pound MLV in the middle as a sandwich with wood veneer on the side and edge banding around that. Fully custom wood blocking here for the lock set. Yes, it's complicated. Yes, it's crazy, but 
that is why I do this for a living because this stuff is not easy. And then I custom designed all the stud work because it all had to be perfectly done. You might be wondering what the heck is going on here. So if we put back in the ceiling, we will see that we have our ceiling joists and I am bringing the wall all the way up to the subfloor below. The reason for this is if you think about it, let's get our, our wall back in place here. And it's something a lot of people don't think about. But sound could easily transfer up over my wall if it stopped at the bottom of the ceiling joist. So I like to do this in, in when clients let me because <laughs> it's a really smart idea. This now goes up to the subfloor. So any sound that's trying to come through here has to make it through this heavy massive area here. Uh, it gets into this area here where it has insulation and then it has to then come through my ceiling which I'll explain in a second. Which, so this added mass here completes our system with a mass spring mass in the studio, although it's sideways and then down, but it still accomplishes the same thing of mass spring mass. So things to think about that no one thinks about. I've never seen this done in a book. This is something, as far as I know, I'm the only one that's really doing it unless other studio designers are, but I think it works really well, even though the contractor probably hates me. All your electrical, all your tubing can go right through the wall. Just use acoustic sealant around it. No big deal there. Um, let's take a look at our HVAC and baffle boxes here while we're looking at it. So if I look at my baffle boxes, I wonder, there's the top. There we go. So this is a design that some of you might steal. I don't say it's going to work perfectly, which is why I use the Nailer Industries event, because your airspeed is still really high in such a small space. I did 45 degree angle baffles to still get some low frequency response. But for the most part, this is a large plenum box, not necessarily a true baffle box. It's going to do the best we can, you know, and it's rock solid, like it's made of tons of mass. I've got wood, 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 drywall, plywood, three quarter inch plywood. There's mass loaded vinyl in the top. There's mass loaded vinyl on the bottom. This thing is super, super heavy. Some of you might be like, Wilson, you made a video saying you hate mass loaded vinyl and you're using it in this. I only use it, only use mass loaded vinyl when I need mass in a very thin layer. That's the only time I use it. And this client said it's worth it to him to spend the extra money and get the the square footage back from using mass loaded vinyl, not even square footage, square inches back. Cause we're not talking about a lot of space here. Um, the other baffle box with the return grill is the exact same thing in the other direction, huge gigantic hole here, but it doesn't matter because we have a ton of mass and insulation in here making up for it. The black stuff is our specialty insulation that I used for my ducks. Alrighty then. So that was fun going through that. Now I want to show you guys one more thing here. I want to show you, uh, la, 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 the ceiling. So let's take a look at this. The ceiling is quite interesting. So, oh yeah, here's our Mason Industries clips, the wick isolation clips, just so you can see, cut into the stud a little bit so it fits that gap. Um, some more of the trickiness with the ceiling. So this took me a while to figure out, but I have the hush drain rafts off this beam, and then that decouples the drywall from the beam, creates this cavity here, which should be filled with insulation above, or some insulation in here, just so you don't just get a huge resonant chamber. We've got crazy framing, custom framing here, so that these hush frame rafts can hold the ceiling right above the door. I'm telling you guys, this was not fun to design. It took a lot of work. On this area here, let's take a cross section of this if we can. Let me see if I can get you a good view of this. If we take out our double walls, yeah, there we go. So here's our ceiling cross section, custom one by twos along this side held up by the hush frame rafts. Again, continuous, this was my design for the ceiling to give us that maximum level of isolation from the house above when he's jamming out and ripping, you know, super loud guitars, drums in here. This is what I'm gonna try to do is we have drywall, two layers, uh, MLV right here in the middle for added mass. Yes, the viscoelasticity is helpful, but because it's sandwiched, we're really looking at mass here more than the visco viscoelastic effect of the ability of the flexibility of the mass loaded vinyl. And then we have um, the uh, another layer of 5 8 inch drywall all connected with the hush frame rafts. There's enough hush frame rafts to support the added weight of this, so that's important to think about. Need to talk to a structural engineer to make sure that it can support the weight above, which he did. So all of this is super important here. Oh, man, this is a lot. So... <laughs>
I think I'm going to wrap up this video pretty soon and make a part two that goes into maybe some more aspects of this, like the window and this custom shelving here. Um, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this because there's a lot that went into it. Here's that ISO amp box. So I'll talk about that in another one. There's our specialty fans that are bringing air in, fresh air from the rest of the basement, and then exhausting stale air out. This is a specialty box I designed around the fan so he doesn't hear it in his garage. And then that fan air is exhausted right to the outside. So a whole lot going on in this design. I just wanted to share it with you guys because I thought you would be fascinated by it and it kind of shows some of you who are interested in working with me what I do you know this is what I do for my clients this would be then turned into two-dimensional plans which I already gave the client um, and then they're actually in the process of building it right now so I'll let you guys know when it's finished how it turned out and I'm sure we will all be excited to figure out if all this hard work paid off in the end which I'm sure it will it's gonna be great all right pretty cool right so that was a fascinating journey uh, it's a complicated design, one of the most complicated designs I have done yet. And it goes to show you that even a small studio in a garage can still be a complex design that requires a lot of forethought and planning. So if you are going down this journey of designing your studio and you want to do it all yourself, definitely check out that free soundproofing workshop at soundproofyourstudio.com workshop. It's totally free. It's gonna, a great way to get more information about soundproofing. But if you are like, yeah, I don't wanna spend the time and I wanna invest my money in someone who knows what they're doing, then definitely check out that soundproof clarity call on my website. Just go to soundproofyourstudio.com, sign up for the soundproof clarity call, and I'd be happy to talk to you about your project. All right, I'll see you all next week with more information on soundproofing and room acoustics and building your dream home recording studio. And thanks so much for subscribing, for commenting. And if you're listening on our podcast, it's always great to leave a review. I really appreciate it. I'll see you all next week.